Okay, this is going to be the second and final update of my BYO Guitars EVH Wolfgang um, kit build. So we left off last time, I was getting ready to uh, finish the, the guitar and put it together. And uh, let me show you where it is at this point. As you can see, it's all put together. Finishing is pretty much done, just a few minor details left. But uh, it's all together, came out looking better than I hoped it would actually, uh, considering my completely amateur status on, on doing wood finishing. There is the final product, and let me explain to you how I got from where I was in the last video to this. So as you remember in the last video, the, uh, I was concerned about the thinness of the veneer. So my, I was determined to not do any more sanding than I absolutely had to. So I very, very lightly sanded the top. I didn't use any sort of a grain filler or anything. I simply uh, applied the stain. Um, it was the Color Tones uh, Vintage Amber is the stain I ended up using. And I diluted that a little bit with water. I didn't dilute too much because I wanted a nice deep tone uh, of amber. So I diluted it a little bit and uh, ended up with what you just saw, which is a, a very nice color. Uh, it, it pretty much exactly what I wanted. So I'm, I'm very happy with the outcome of that. So I applied the stain and then applied three co uh, coats of true oil initially. For the back of the guitar, I actually did use a wood filler. And I used, um, it was Elmer's, an Elmer's brand of wood filler. So I took the wood filler and I mixed in some of the black Keta dye stain that I had mixed up for the back. So I thinned out that uh, Elmer's uh, wood filler to make it uh, easier to apply and sand. So I applied a good coat of that uh, all around the back and the sides. And I sanded it down with, uh, I don't know if it was 120 or 220, I can't remember the grit sandpaper I used. But after I applied it, let it dry, I sanded it back. And then um, after that was all done, I applied a coat of black Keta dye stain. Um, now I mixed a little bit to too much water in with the powder and it came out a little bit lighter, than, actually quite a bit lighter than I really was wanting. Uh, I wanted a, neat, a nice dark black on the back. So what I was going to do, my intention was to um, take the, uh, the black and add some more of the Keta dye powder to the mixture to darken it up. Uh, and it was at night time and uh, I was using a regular incandescent light uh, which has a yellow cast and it, it was night and that yellow cast was making it hard for me to tell the difference between the black and the brown stain powder. Um, so I was holding them up trying to figure out which one was which and I, I picked the one which I thought was black and it ended up that I picked the brown powdered stain instead of the black. Uh, so I mixed that in uh, thinking it was black and what it did is it, it uh, turned the stain uh, a brown. Uh, and I didn't realize it until I started applying it to the guitar. Um, and I paused for a little bit and thought about it. So after thinking about it for a, a little bit, I went ahead and, and just went with it. And uh, so I applied a good coat of the brown. Uh, and it ended up looking okay. I, I wasn't that happy with it. It was a very bland, kind of a boring brown. Uh, certainly nothing that I, I would uh, be proud of. So I, uh, I asked my wife, uh, you know, what she thought about it, and she suggested that I take the vintage amber that I applied to the top and uh, take that stain and apply that over the top of the brown stain on the back and the sides. So I did that. I applied a coat of the vintage amber, and it started bringing out some more of the golden hues, which is what I really wanted, was a nice golden brown. And then um, I added a second coat, and it still wasn't quite there. It still was just a little bit too bland of a brown. So what I did is I uh, took the bottle of Vintage Amber uh, and I didn't dilute it or anything. I just right for, straight from the bottle I applied the stain to the back and the sides and uh, that, that heavy uh, solution or that heavy uh, coating directly from the bottle brought out all the tones and the colors that I was after. Um, so now I've got a nice rich golden brown uh, color to the back which is ultimately what I wanted and hopefully that'll show up here I'm not sure if the lighting is, is all that good but uh, you can see that that nice golden tone uh, on the sides and the back which really really complements the top of the guitar uh, goes really really well with that vintage amber I mean I, I couldn't be any happier uh, with that that's just beautiful um, anyway that's how I ended up 
getting the brown. Uh, my original goal again was black uh, and serendipity intervened and I got brown which is what I originally thought I might want anyway. So I'm, I'm quite pleased. And so after I got the brown, the, the color, the tint that I wanted, I went ahead and applied three coats of true oil to the back just as a protector. So anyway, that was the base of the guitar. So for the neck of the guitar, um, I applied uh, two coats of the vintage amber to the headstock and, uh, and left the sides and the back a natural color. Um, and I, I kind of like the way that, that looks. The wood on the headstock is not exactly the same as the wood on the body. And so the headstock came out just a little bit lighter of a shade than the body. Um, it's not terrible. And, um, it's close enough. I wish it was a little bit darker, but it's, it's perfectly acceptable the way it is, at least for my needs. Um, so I, I have no real complaints. So two coats of uh, Vintage Jammer on the top. For the rest of the neck and for the, the back of the head, I used a product called um, Tried and True. And uh, this is uh, a polymerized linseed oil and beeswax mixture. And I got this from um, Stumac again. So this is really easy to use. You, you can't screw it up. Um, I wanted a natural finish on the neck. I didn't want a, a heavy varnish uh, or anything. Um, the other two guitars I have both have sort of a natural finish to them. And uh, that stuff, you rub it in, real thin light coats. I put two of them on there, real thin light coats, rubbed it right into the wood, and it came out pretty much exactly the way I had hoped. Uh, just a nice natural finish with a bit of protection uh, for the wood. Um, so I, I'm real happy with that product. It's only like, I think, 350 for the bottle, and that bottle it's not a very big bottle, but you're using such thin coats that it'll go a long, long ways. But uh, really good stuff. Really recommend that. And then I uh, proceeded to assemble the guitar because what I wanted to do was get the guitar all together, uh, make sure everything was working properly before I went any further with the finishing process because I didn't want to get it all together and then find out that there was more issues uh, that I wasn't aware of. I uh, put it all together, soldered it up, um, put the strings on and played it for a day just trying to figure out what issues uh, I might encounter and uh, I did actually run across a couple uh, during that process. So after I got it together one of the issues that I uncovered was um, with the springs in the back here. Whenever I would push the Floyd Rose forward these strings would hit the, the wood here, the base of the wood uh, and they'd grab and it'd make it almost impossible to push it properly forward. But what I had to do was I had to dremel out uh, two channels uh, in the wood at an angle, downward angle, um, so that these springs would have some room uh, below them so they wouldn't grab onto the wood. The problem is, uh, is that the Floyd Rose they send you has really the, the improper, an improperly sized base for the guitar, for the kit. Um, I believe this is 32 millimeters tall and uh, in order to provide clearance for these springs uh, against the base wood, I think it needs to really be about 36 or more millimeters tall. So the root of the problem with these springs binding on the wood is, is that this block is simply not tall enough. So the other issue I ran into is that the Floyd Rose, um, since this is not a floating Floyd Rose, um, it actually rests on the body of the guitar. The uh, issue I found is that when I would uh, push forward and then release it, is that the strings or the guitar wouldn't always go back into tune perfectly. And I, I looked into the reason for that, and there's really two reasons. The wood just simply isn't a solid enough surface for that to rest against. It has a little bit of give. And in addition to the wood not being a completely solid surface, there's a, a plate on the bottom of the Floyd Rose that isn't exactly solid either, and it has a little bit of a play there. So when this thing is resting and, and there's pressure being applied to that, it's not a, it doesn't go back consistently uh, to the exact tuning that uh, it was. And so to solve that problem, I got this, uh, it's a Futone trim stopper, and I think this was like $20, it was Futone.com. But what this does is it has a, uh, it has a, it's an adjustable bolt, basically, that goes through this, uh, this block right here and then rests up against the, uh, the block of the um, Floyd Rose and provides a, a nice solid metal surface for it to butt up against, so there's no give to that at all. So that solves that problem. But to get that to work, since this, uh, the block on the Floyd Rose is so short, 
the uh, the trem stopper, if I just screwed it to the top of this base wood right here, was actually too high, and that bolt wasn't resting properly on the base. It was actually slightly above it. So to make it work properly, I had to um, basically chisel out a channel uh, for this to fit into. Um, and uh, so I did that, got it bolted in there, and that's working extremely well. And some, and, and the other thing I did is um, I, I, I wanted some uh, stiffer springs because uh, normally when I had it together the first time I had to have three springs in here to keep the tension proper so that this would be all the way back. And I didn't want to have to have three springs. I wanted to be able to get by with two. So Futone had these stiff springs that are also silent. They have some sort of coating on them that makes them silent so they don't uh, squeak and make all the weird noises that springs make when you, when you stretch them. But uh, I got two of those. They're extra heavy duty and uh, they seem to get the job done. I'm quite happy with those. They look good too. So that's a, another bonus. And since I had one brass piece in here, I decided to go ahead and splurge and get a, bla a brass claw bar uh, just because I thought it would look good. This doesn't really add any enhancement to the uh, functionality of the guitar, but it, it, it makes it look better, in my opinion, the back, because I intend to leave that back uncovered. So after I played the guitar for a day, figured out what the issues were, I uh, went ahead and disassembled it, uh, desoldered it, took it all apart, and then I went back to the final finishing uh, of, the, of the guitar. The neck really didn't need anything more. Uh, again, I only needed the two coats of um, stain, and I had three coats of uh, true oil on here. I think I might have added after I got it back apart, I think I might have added uh, two or three more coats, thin coats. But that was that was pretty much. There wasn't much left to do there. The neck was pretty much done. No worries there. Um, the body, on the other hand, I basically applied. I don't know. I'm guessing 15 to 20 coats at least of true oil to the top, um, and occasionally I would sand it between coats. Um, Again, I'm not an expert wood finisher, so I was sort of just experimenting with different techniques. You know, I'd put a coat on, wait for 20 minutes, put another coat on, and see what the results would be. And I just kept experimenting with different uh, timings between it, you know, uh, between coats and sanding and not sanding and steel wool. Um, and again, I, I completely lost track of how many different coats I have on here, um, but it's a lot, uh, a lot, lot, uh, at least 15, probably more like 20. There's a lot on the front. But the end, the end result is really good. The only thing it needs really now is a, a final buffing. So I, my intention is to get let this dry for a couple of weeks because it really hasn't uh, fully cured yet. But I'm going to let it dry for a couple of weeks, get some um, polishing compound, and uh, polish it up uh, to get a, a nice, even, glossy look at the top. The back, I wasn't concerned about filling in the grain. I decided that you know it just it's not worth it. Um, it, it looks like wood. Uh, and, fine with that grain showing through. Um, so I applied maybe three coats uh, more of true oil to the back. So there's probably a total of six in the back. And it didn't, it didn't as you can see, it didn't fill the grain in. But that's, that's fine with me. I think that looks just fine on this guitar. So as far as the sound goes, uh, in a couple of, in a minute or so, I'm going to play it for you. Uh, I'm going to have it uh, going through my uh, audio interface right into my computer. I'm not going to play it through an amp because I'll add color and whatnot and I'll record it on a Reaper. So essentially what the audio interface does is you plug the guitar in uh, to the audio interface. The audio, the audio interface converts that uh, um, analog signal to digital and then I can record it um, on a program called Reaper. And that'll give you a pretty good indication of how this thing sounds with the, the stock uh, pickups and equipment. The only thing that's not stock on here other than those extra parts I bought is the, of course the strings. I didn't. These aren't the uh, strings that came with it. These are uh, I can't remember the brand, but they're they're uh, extra light number nine. Okay, let's see how this thing sounds. I'm just gonna play a few chords and we'll check out the tones. Okay, here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
So if I had to do it again, there are a few things that I would do different. Um, for one thing, I wouldn't use wood filler uh, to try to fill in the green. I would probably, the next time around, use a regular sanding sealer. Um, the wood filler was just difficult. Uh, it was messy. Uh, far more difficult than uh, what it would have been if I had just gone with sanding sealer in the first place. The next thing I would do, obviously, uh, is I would test fit all the parts fully before I uh, drill any holes or, or do any assembly. Um, that uh, incident with the neck, which you saw in the last video, where the neck wasn't straight because the pocket wasn't drilled, or wasn't uh, uh, routed out quite straight. Um, I really should have checked that first to make sure that that was straight and aligned properly before I drilled those holes. So next time around, I would uh, be a little bit more careful uh, to test fit things properly before I do any drilling or modifications. The other thing I would do differently is I would keep my table a little cleaner. Uh, anything that wasn't needed for the step I was doing, I think I would take all that stuff off the table. Uh, I had a, an incident with this guitar where um, I was finishing the neck, uh, putting the uh, uh, tried and true, whatever the stuff is, yeah, the tried and true stuff on the neck, and I had my uh, bottle of amber stain sitting on the table not too far from the guitar um, as I was applying it and I was rubbing it out and the table was shaking a little bit and I thought the bottle might tip over so I picked it up and moved it and um, what happened is some of that stain got on my my glove and I didn't realize it and I picked up the neck and uh, I got some stain marks on the neck and uh, so I realized what I had done and uh, had to sand that out and that was a uh, that was a pain. It's really uh, kind of cool. What the? Oh my god. The other thing I would do differently is uh, when I stained the head, I taped off the sides to keep the stain from getting on the sides of the of the headstock. Uh, if I if I built another guitar, I wouldn't do that. Um, I would just leave that tape off because what happened is that some of the stain seeped down uh, behind that tape. And uh, since I didn't know it, it had, it had a lot of chance to, to really soak into the wood. And so I had to sand those spots where it had seeped behind the tape. I had to sand those pretty good to get that, that stain out. And there's still some, uh, some very faint marks, uh, stain marks from, from that. So I, I would probably not tape it off. I would just be careful when I stain it to keep the stain on the top. And if any does happen to get on the side, it won't uh, be a heavy coat that soaks in uh, real deep. Um, so I would definitely do that differently next time. So the last thing I'd do differently is I would tape off the binding uh, because I just didn't enjoy the process of scraping at the end, uh, scraping and sanding that. That was a, a pain. Uh, so next time I think I'm going to tape it off, leave the tape on there, for the entire time until I'm completely done with all the finishing steps and peel it off and hopefully have a lot less uh, mess to clean up afterwards. So that's the last thing I, I think I would do differently. Other than that, I, I'm pretty happy with the results. And one other little thing I forgot to mention, um, another little addition is I, uh, one thing about guitars, I, I, I don't like looking for these, these hex wrenches. So I bought this little, uh, this little uh, mount, hex wrench, a hex wrench mount that fits on the back of the headstock and uh, I really like that. That's a, a cool gizmo. Um, so it's very handy. Keeps your hex wrenches just right with an easy reach. You just pull them out, push them back in when you're done. Uh, and not only is it handy, but I think it looks kind of kind of cool. Really, really like that a lot. And that was cheap. It didn't cost much at all. I don't remember what it cost, but it wasn't much. In fact, I may add one of these to my other two guitars. Um, so yeah, cool. And as far as the quality of the kit goes, overall, I, I'm very happy with it. I think the guitar sounds really good. Uh, overall, the parts, I think, are halfway decent quality. They get the job done at the very least. Love the guitar. Very happy with it. Uh, any complaints I have are minor, uh, especially when you consider the cost, 189 bucks, And you get a really beautiful, uh, very nice playing and sounding guitar. So that's that. It, it's a thumbs up for me.